Hey everybody, here we are about to start chapter four of Boxcar Children. Hopefully everyone's doing well. First, let's go over the questions that we have from chapter three. Um, hopefully you have drawn a picture of the boxcar and sent it to me, um, their new home. Okay, um, another question I ask you is what's gonna happen next, which we'll see today. But if you have an idea before you listen to it, send it to me. Um, so what was the setting in this chapter? We've had uh, quite a few different settings and this was a different one. The setting for this one was a boxcar in the woods. Okay, and then I ask you what a boxcar was and hopefully you've looked that up. It's, it's a train car. Okay, it's, a, it's one of the boxes that you see there in Simsboro on the train that comes by. It was an abandoned one on a, a train track that was no longer used. And so they opened up that heavy door and they were able to get in there. Um, what about the characters? Have the characters changed any? No, the characters are the same. Um, and they've had lots of problems and solutions um, that have come along. And we're going to see some more today okay so chapter four today is called um, Henry has two surprises and I'm gonna ask you what those two surprises were here's our picture that we have at the beginning of the chapter okay now remember at the end of chapter three and we'll read the last little bit there suddenly she but she suddenly stopped for she heard a noise. Crack, crack, crack. Something was in the woods. Okay, so remember Henry's gone to the store and the other kids are alone in the boxcar. Okay, so here we go. Jesse whispered, keep still. The three children did not say a word. They sat quietly in the boxcar looking at the bushes. I wonder if it's a bear, thought Benny. Soon something came out, but it wasn't a bear, it was a dog which hopped along on three legs, crying softly and holding up a front paw. It's all right, said Jesse. It's only a dog, but I think he's hurt. The dog looked up and saw the children and then he wagged his tail. Poor dog, said Jesse, are you lost? Come over here and let me look at your paw. The dog hopped over to the boxcar and the children got out. Jesse looked at the paw and said, Oh dear, you poor dog, there is a big thorn in your foot. The dog stopped crying and looked at Jesse. Good dog, said Jesse. I can help you, but maybe it will hurt. The dog looked up at Jesse and wagged his tail again. Violet ordered Jesse, Please wet my handkerchief in the brook. Jesse sat down on the stump and took the dog in her lap. She patted him and gave him a little piece of bread, and then she began to pull out the thorn. It was a long thorn, but the dog did not make any noise. Jesse pulled and pulled, and at last the thorn came out. Violet had a wet handkerchief ready. Jesse put it around the dog's paw, and he looked up at her and wagged his tail a little. There's a picture of her working on the dog helping him out, pulling that thorn out. The dog couldn't pull the thorn out, so she helped him. He wants to say thank you, Jesse, cried Violet. He is a good dog not to cry. Yes, he is, agreed Jesse. Now I had better hold him for a while so that he will lie down and rest his leg. We can surprise Henry, remarked Benny. Now we have a dog. So we can, said Jesse. But that was not my surprise. I was going to get a lot of blueberries for supper. Can't we look for blueberries while you hold the dog, asked Violet. Yes, you can, said Jesse. Look over there by the big trees. Benny and Violet ran over to look. Oh, Jesse, cried Benny. Did you ever see so many blueberries? I guess five blueberries? No, I guess 10 blueberries? Jesse laughed. I guess there are more than five or ten, Benny, she said. Get a clean towel and pick them into it. For a while, Jesse watched Benny and Violet picking blueberries. Most of Benny's blueberries are going into his mouth, they sh she thought with a laugh. But maybe that's just as well. He won't get so hungry waiting for Henry to come back with the milk. 
she carried the dog over to the children and sat down beside them, the dog on her lap. With her help, the towel was soon full of blueberries. I wish we had some dishes, Jessie said. Then we could have blueberries and milk. Never mind, said Violet. When Henry comes, we can eat some blueberries and then take a drink of milk. When Henry came, he had some heavy bundles. He had four bottles of milk in a bag, a loaf of brown bread, and also some fine yellow cheese. He looked at the dog. Where did you get that fine dog, he cried. He came to us, said Benny. He has a surprise for you. Henry went over to the dog who wagged his tail. Henry patted him and said, he ought to be a good watchdog. Why is the handkerchief on his foot? He had a big thorn in his foot, answered Violet, and Jessie took it out and put on the handkerchief. It hurt him, but he did not cry or growl. His name is Watch, remarked Benny. Oh, is it? asked Jessie, laughing. Watch is a good name for a watchdog. Did you bring some milk, asked Benny, looking hungrily at the bottles. I should say I did, replied Henry. Four bottles. Poor old Benny, said Jessie. We'll have dinner now. Or is it supper? It must be supper, said Henry, for soon we'll have to go to bed. Tomorrow we'll eat three times, said Jessie. Now Jessie liked to have things in order, and so she put the laundry bag on some pine needles for a tablecloth. Then she cut the loaf of brown bread into five big pieces. Why does she do five this time instead of four? She's been cutting it in four. Think about why. The cheese was cut into four. Dogs don't like cheese, remarked Benny. The poor little dog was glad too, for he was very hungry. Violet put the four bottles of milk on the table and Jessie put some blueberries and cheese at each plate. Blueberries, cried Henry. Jessie, you had two surprises for me. I'm sorry we haven't any cups, Jessie said. We'll have to drink out of the bottles. Now all come and sit, sit down. So supper began. Look, Benny, said Henry, you take some blueberries, then eat some brown bread, then some cheese, then take a drink of milk. It's good, said Benny. He began to put more blueberries into his mouth. The dog had supper too. Jessie gave him bread as he lay on the ground beside her and he drank milk out of her hand. When supper was over, there was some milk left in each bottle. We'll have the rest of the milk for breakfast, said Jessie. Tonight, we are going to sleep on beds. Let's get some pine needles now. Soon the children had a big pile. Henry jumped into the boxcar and Jessie gave him the pine needles. He made four beds in one end of the car. This side is the bedroom, said Jessie. What will the other, other side be, asked Benny. The other side, said Jessie. Hmm, let me think. I guess that will be the sitting room, and maybe some of the time it, it will be the kitchen. Then she said, come now, come and get washed. She took the cake of soap and went down to the brook. That will be fun, Benny, said Violet. We'll splash our paws in the brook just as Little Brown Bear does. She knew that Benny did not like to be washed. They're always tricking Benny to get him to do stuff. The children were all very hot, and so they were glad to splash in the cold water. Benny put cold water and soap on his face with the others and dried his hands on a towel. We'll have to have a line to dry the towels on, said Jessie. So she took the string out of the laundry bag and tied one end of it to a tree. The other end of the string she tied to the boxcar. This made a good clothesline. When she had washed one towel and Violet had washed the other one, they hung both towels on the clothesline. Do you have a clothesline at your house? A string that's stretched from one, some, one thing to another and you hang clothes on it um, to dry. Um, if you uh, don't have a dryer, then that's a great way to dry clothes and plus it smells really good. It looks like home, said Henry. See the washing? He laughed. Jessie was thinking, we ought to get some water to drink before we go to bed, she said, but what shall we put it in? Let's put all the milk into two bottles, said Henry, and then we can fill the other two with water. Good, said Jessie. You go alone to the fountain, Henry. You can hide if anyone comes along. 
Henry went out very quietly and soon came back with two bottles full of cold water. Benny drank a little, but he was almost asleep. The other children helped him into the boxcar, and then they all climbed in. Sorry, having trouble turning the page. Jesse carrying the dog. He lay down at once beside her. It is so hot that we'll have to leave the door open, said Henry. And soon they were fast asleep, dog and all. The moon came up, but they did not see it. This was the first time in four days that they could go to sleep at night as children should. Okay, so let me ask you some questions from this chapter. Let's see what I wrote down. Okay, at the beginning of the story, what was the sound? What did they hear? What was wrong with the dog? And how did they take care of it? That was a problem. How did they solve it? What was, what was the dog's name? What did they name the dog? What were Jesse's two surprises for Henry? And did Henry like them? Um, why did they cut the bread into five pieces? Everything else they cut in four. Why did they cut the bread in five? And then the last thing, <clears throat> the very last sentence of the story said, this was the first time in four days that they could go to sleep at night as children should. What does that mean? Tell me what you think that means. Okay, that was a great one. And the next chapter will be chapter five.